Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at autoloads. Before we get into that, let's talk about singletons. Now, singleton is a design pattern where you only have a single instance of an object. Godot does not support singletons, or rather you are unable to program your own singleton through code. However, Godot does offer a workaround. Now, Godot's workaround to the singleton pattern is through autoloads. Now, autoloads allows us to create a single instantiated script onto the scene tree. Now, depending on what you inherit through the extends keyword in your script, your autoloads will in fact have access to the lifecycle scripts because again, it will be created and active on the scene tree. Why in the world would you need to have only a single instantiated object? Well, for one thing, you may want a single source of truth for your data. Imagine a scenario where you need to share information amongst different scripts and game objects. If there are multiple sources of truth for your data, how do you know which one holds the most updated information? And well, that's what Autoloads tries to solve by having only a single instantiated object in the scene tree, you will only have a single source of truth. So in the case with an autoloaded script, you will feel more confident in the fact that you are retrieving the most updated information or piece of data. And on top of that, autoloads allows us to keep our data living across multiple scenes when we change scenes. And creating an autoloaded script is quite simple. And you can do this in four easy steps. First, you have to create your script. Then you have to go to project settings and to the auto load tab, then add the path to your script. And lastly, enable the singleton option and voila, you will have a single instantiated object on the scene tree, no matter which scene is loaded. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see, we're inside project settings in the auto load tab. Right here, we have our path to our GD script file. We have a node name, which in this case is singleton example. And here is our path singleton example dot GD. And lastly, our singleton is in fact enabled. And that's the most important thing thing to remember. We need to make sure that that box is checkmarked. If you omit the check mark in the box for the enable option, you will in fact have to do an additional step in order to retrieve data from your singleton, or in this case, autoloaded script on the scene tree. Now, when the game runs, you'll notice that you have your GD file, in this case, singleton example. And right here we have the root viewport. And when our game is running, you'll notice that our singleton example autoloaded script is in fact instantiated onto the scene tree. Now let's go ahead and see how we create our own autoloaded script. Now, if we go to project and project settings, we must go to the autoload tab. And as you can see here, we already have a singleton. So let's go ahead and create another instantiated script object or autoloaded object. Now, first we must define our path to a GD script file. In this case, we can type it in here or we can click the folder button. And over here, we just pick our GD file. In this case, I'm gonna pick scene one script. And right here in the node name, we can choose our name. Notice that the name is auto generated based on the name of your file. We'll go ahead and press the add button and you'll see that our scene one script has been created. And now every time we run our game, we will have both singleton example and scene one script auto loaded onto our scene tree. Now notice that both of them have the enable check mark option set to true. We don't want to touch that. We also have a folder button, but all that really does is it just opens up the script so we can edit it on our Godot app. Now on top of the folder button that just takes you to the script file so you can edit the code, we also have an up button and a down button, and that changes our order of our autoloaded scripts. Now, this is important to note because whatever order you see here is how they will be ordered or rather autoloaded onto the scene tree when your game runs. So let's take a look at an example now. So scene one script is first and singleton example is second. So when we run our game, you're going to notice when you click the remote tab that scene one script is first and singleton example is second. And then 
you'll notice that node 2D is third. Basically, everything, or rather all nodes you see in your scene tab will be loaded after your auto-loaded scripts are loaded onto the scene tree. Now, let's go ahead and change the order. And instead of scene one script being first, we're going to set singleton example first. So you'll notice here that when we run our game, Singleton example is first and scene one script is second, followed by everything else that was in our scene tab. Now that we took a good look at our project settings, let me go ahead and delete the scene one script from the auto load tab. And to do that, you just click the trash can icon to delete it. So for the rest of the example, I'm going to use the singleton example script file to show you auto loaded scripts. Now on top of that, I have three scripts. The singleton example has life point, and this is the information we're going to grab. So on top of being able to retrieve variables or excuse me, class properties, we are also able to use functions. Now our method called life will just add 10 points. And on top of that, because we extends from no 2D, we are also able to run our script life cycles. In this case, we can run the ready virtual method. Now it's quite simple. It's just a simple example. I just want to show you that when we change from scene one to scene two, that when we edit our life points, that the data in fact is consistent among scene changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scene two script file. So we extend from node 2D, we only have one virtual method. In this case, it's the ready virtual method. And all it does is it prints to the screen scene two. So we know that we have in fact changed from scene one to scene two. And we print the life points property provided to us by the singleton example script. Now notice here that we have an instance object called singleton example, but in our entire script, we do not instantiate it. We do not load it. As a matter of fact, because it was auto loaded in the project settings with the singleton check mark enabled, we are able to globally access the script file through the name that we gave it in the auto loads tab. And again, the name we gave it was singleton example. And so we can just go ahead and call it followed by the dot notation followed by either the property name or the method name. And that's how simple it is to use auto loaded scripts. Now in scene one, we have the same thing. We print to the console scene one. So we know that we are in scene one. We print the singleton example life points property. We then go ahead and change its value from 10 to 11. Then we call the singleton example script instantiated objects life method, which adds 10 to the life points. So 10 plus 11 is 21. We go ahead and we print that to the screen or excuse me, the console. And then we call the scene trees change scene method and we change to scene two. Now, when I go ahead and run this game, you'll notice in the output in our console log that we do in fact call the singletons ready function or excuse me, ready virtual method. We are in scene one and we do print to the console the life points property value, which starts at 10. We change it to 11. We add 10 because we call the life method. The new value is 21. After that, we change our scene and you'll notice here that we call scene two and we print out the value of the singleton example script file life points property. And because we changed it in scene one to the value of 21, notice in scene two, when we call that property value life points, it will print out 21. And so you can see that singletons are a great way of making sure that data is consistent when we change scenes. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button and thank you for clicking the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. I'm going to go ahead and upload what I showed you in this episode to GitHub. So please feel free to download the example project in the description down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.